Have you ever asked the question, why does the Federal Reserve and other central banks target 2%? Why not 2.5%? Why not 3 or 4% for their inflation metrics? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about where that came from. But I want to show you what's been happening up until this point, where we've come with inflation, because that's ultimately going to determine what happens in the coming days, weeks, and months. I will show you this information to empower you, how you can look at the news, how you can see the incoming data and actually pinpoint what will occur in the near future. Beyond this information, you've got to really realize how your portfolio, how your investments, how your price of your home will be affected by all of it. Let's begin by showing you what's coming. Well, investors will be keenly watching as the U.S. Central Bank releases minutes from its latest meeting on Wednesday. So that's one, one very important thing because everything the Federal Reserve does is going to impact markets. It's going to impact everything. In fact, mortgage rates and all these things. And then on Friday, the Fed's favorite inflation indicator comes out as well. If you pay attention to this channel, if you subscribe, these two things are going to bring you that information the very next day, just hours after that comes out. So you stay tuned. I'll bring you that data. Then we have what's going on with Europe. This is, a, this is really important because it shows you how bad things are. Same situation with the Federal Reserve. Euro area braces for the era of central bank losses after QE binge. You had the ECB, along with every other central bank, buying up these so-called assets in a time in which, for some things, they really didn't need to be doing this. They were buying the bonds of the biggest companies, some of the biggest companies in the world, in fact. Why didn't the world? Would they have done that? We're talking about BMW and Volkswagen and all these huge multi-billion dollar companies. They were buying up their assets. Bundesbank may be worst hit with negative equity looming. Eurozone rules will probably mean fiscal cost to governments. So you, the individual, have to ultimately bear the burden of this complete nonsense policy of central banking. What do you do without central banking? Well, of course, you can have your own treasury take care of all of these elements that are done by the central banks, but it wouldn't be independent, now would they? This is so funny, because if you remember, after the financial crisis, one of the, I don't know if it was Barry Sanders or one of the other individuals in the Congress was asking um, Ben Bernanke, and he said, look, Tell us who you gave the, he, he named the number, I forget, it was, let's say, $1 trillion. Tell us who you gave the trillion dollars to. And he looked back in his eyes. He said, no, it was given to financial institutions, whoever needed it, basically. He replied like that, and it was straight up, gangster style. That's what they do with the money. They do whatever it is they want. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's in your best interest. It is in the interest of the special interest. It's in all these multinational conglomerates, the multi-billion dollar companies. Not you and I. They don't care about you and I. It's very obvious. They have made that clear. And yet most people say, we cheer you on Federal Reserve. We cheer you on ECB. Do what you got to do. Pump up those stocks. But they don't realize the ramifications that come after. That's what we're dealing with today. Okay, look at Amazon. I thought this was interesting. Amazon corporate workers face pay reduction after shares slip. Stock heavy compensation plan means employees to receive 15% to 50% below projected pay targets. So this is what happens when you're, uh, you know, assuming that something's going to occur. The price of the stock has come down. The company is saying, okay, we don't make as much money as we did before in all of this. It kind of reminds me of what happened in the movie Christmas Vacation, where Chevy Chase is expecting this big bonus. He's going to put in a pool and then, uh-oh, didn't get what he wanted. Well, he kind of went on a rampage after that. But you see the same kind of thing happening right here. Of course, this is fiction, but it just shows us that these kind of things could occur to anybody, anywhere. 
And that's what happens when you expect something to occur and it just doesn't materialize. Just like the Amazon stock is going to continue to go up forever and ever and ever. And right now, well, at least the last time I checked, that was at levels that we saw back in 2018. And so nothing goes up forever. Maybe you look at the Amazon stock 10 years from now, you look back and you say, oh, okay, that was a great idea that I bought at that time because now it's up further. But it doesn't mean that it can always consistently go up. And when is it that you need to take out your money? Maybe it's not today, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's in 10 years. But ultimately, you wanna know that you have bought in at the right places, hopefully on average, and then you do well over time. It's very difficult to do, and that's why for most people, simply buying an index ETF is going to fare much better than what, you know, what others can do. The mutual funds don't keep up with it. It's a simple matter of fact. But a lot of people think they're so smart. Why? Because they're watching their favorite degenerate YouTubers, and they're telling them, get all in on this stock, get all in. All right, good luck. Now, we move into layoffs. Um, I thought it was an interesting one that everybody should be aware of. Uh, maybe if you work for a big company especially. Days after mass layoffs trimmed 12,000 jobs at Google, hundreds of former employees flocked to an online chat room to commiserate about the seemingly erratic way they had suddenly been made redundant. This is the suggestion that Maybe it was AI. Maybe it was an algorithm. Now, Google says that there is no algorithm involved in the job cut decisions, but former employees are not wrong to wonder as a fleet of artificial intelligence tools became ingrained in office life. Ah, what about this? As uh, a January survey of 300 human resource leaders at US companies reveals that 98% of them say software and algor algorithms will help them make layoff decisions this year. And as companies lay off large swaths of people with cuts creeping into the five digits, it's hard for humans to execute alone. I want you to know that artificial intelligence, whether you like to believe it or not, is coming. It's taking over everything. There are very few jobs that involve work on a computer that quite frankly, can't be replaced by artificial intelligence. So you must be concerned, you must be worried, and hopefully you can take advantage of it now while you still can. You can leverage some of the technologies that are there now before it comes and replaces a lot of those jobs. We have robotics as well. We have all different types of automation. This is not just for you know some things that you've seen out there. There's a lot of jobs that come for it now, even exiting on those jobs on the other end. So watch out, okay, everybody? Liquidity conditions yet to improve. This is what's happening globally. If you look at it, uh, this is the global uh, real M1 year over year, pushed forward six months, which compares us to essentially the MS CI US. We're looking at the, you know, the US stock market, essentially year over year, that had declined, now it's kind of you know bottom out. Comparing that to the stock market itself, so when comparing that to the money supply, you can see that that had declined severely year over year. And that generally, along with my money mirror method, I promise, video's coming soon on that, essentially shows us that the amount of money that had been, I don't wanna say removed from the system, but let's just call it that, removed from the system has a material impact on the stock market. That affects what the central banks are doing with their so-called assets, and that affects the companies that are uh, directly impacted by their stock prices going down, shareholders are upset, they say, hey, you gotta fire some people to make up for it. That's what's going on. All of that connected right here. So important, okay? Now, 2%, 3%, 4%, what should the target be for central banks? Well, where did that even come from? This is actually from New Zealand. So my friends in New Zealand, check this out if you didn't know about this. The Reserve Bank in New Zealand Act of 1989 introduced inflation targeting that and that policy is being used today in economies around the world. Canada announced this inflation target in 1991, UK in 1992, Sweden, Finland, 
1993. It took until 2012 for the US to declare its 2% inflation target. There's no evidence that 3% or 4% inflation does substantial damage relative to 2% inflation. That's what they say. So here's the history behind it. Here is where it came from. New Zealand, my friends, 2%, not 2.1, not 2.4, not 2.5 or 3 or 4 or anything else. It was 2%. These numbers mean nothing because as you know, they are, they are not accurate. Do you go to the store and find things are up by 2% even back in, let's say, 2019? Was 2% a really accurate level of inflation? Look at the costs for school, any type of school, whether that's maybe a private type of school, whether that's the textbooks at the school, whether that is different programs that the kids might be involved in at the school. So any piece of that school has gone up. College tuition gone up tremendously. The debt associated with that skyrocketed. That's just one thing. That's just one thing. And that was, let's forget about 2020 and on. Let's say 2019 and prior. It was crazy. Same with the food. Do you go to the store and find that prices keep declining and you say to yourself, oh my goodness, whatever am I going to do? The prices keep going down. I get more bags of groceries for the same amount of cash. I don't think so. I, I, I highly doubt it, in fact. But that's what happens today. And of course, there are reasons for this. There are shortages, there are supply problems. Yeah, I get that. But a lot of what's not being discussed is the fact that the currency is being devalued each and every day. And we try to make sense of what they're doing with these inflation targets and not actually just telling people the truth. And we look at stocks, we look at the markets in general. I wanted to just touch on the fact that apparently Goldman Sachs believes that there is the potential for a 24% upside to the Chinese index. The Chinese stock market could go up from here. Why is this the case? Reopening to recovery. That's the big deal. I will bring you in the next few weeks, I'm going to bring you some data that comes out because of course they had their new year, they were closed down, they reopen, and then we go into that recovery mode. I want to check the ports. I want to look at the exports. I want to see all that information and bring it to you. I talked about this uh, previously, looking at how there are a couple factors that we need to look at and one of those being the uh, getting away from all of those lockdowns that's real real important now two odd things that i thought i should mention here the next hot housing market it's out of this world because it's in the metaverse now you can read the article if you want but they give a few examples saying how somebody bought you know in this metaverse or that metaverse and they bought next to Snoop Dogg and it was 1 million there and it was 500,000 there, saying that the virtual land is worth a lot. You, like, and, you know, to some degree, you look at people buy these Pokemon cards, people buy baseball cards, people buy all these different things that, what exactly gives it its value? Well, it's based on the scarcity. They only printed these many cards, therefore it's scarce. In the metaverse, it's a different scenario a little bit. I mean, yeah, you can argue that it's, scarcity in a sense but there are so many different metaverses which one which is the right one which is the one that will be here 10 years from now it's so hard to determine that but when you look at this it's just odd it's just unusual and still today there's a lot of euphoria around it that's what makes me believe that there isn't fear in the markets because people are still buying into it now the transactions have declined significantly the prices and so on but still i find it's there and this is uh, talking about turkey what i wanted to mention for you, no matter where you are, a couple of things here. They pushed up their stock market. How do they do this? And I, I foresee this to be something to happen, not just well, with China, where they do this kind of thing all the time, other places in the world. Policymakers pulled on a range of levers to bolster the stock market in the past week by directing private pension funds and state lenders to buy equities and scrapping taxes on corporate buybacks. Unbelievable. The sovereign wealth fund of Turkey is planning to create a new mechanism allowing the government to buy stocks at times of high volatility. So there is no more market left. Real investors are leaving. The same thing is going on in Japan. That's what I'm trying to tell you that, yeah, maybe if there's enough liquidity, you can get in on that. You can buy it up. 
and then oh everything's going to be a-okay but are you going to be able to make it out is there enough to sell off are you going to be able to have that timing when liquidity is thin you've got to watch out when you're getting into a stock when you get into an investment remember the sell have your plan in place before you pull the trigger on the buy that's my message for today if you found this informative you definitely want to hit that like button and make sure wednesday friday i'm going to bring the information to you you got to stay on this channel make sure you always search for the money gps likely won't come up in your actual feed the money gps i'll see you tomorrow